With all of us shopping so much online today, you want to check out reviews before you buy. What if many are fake? That's our text to nation. I'm Fred Fishkin, and joining us is the CEO of Fake Spot, Saud Khalifa. Thanks for taking the time, Saud. Thank you for having me. So, give us the overview of the of the problem here. How widespread this is? Well, you know, reviews are a very critical part of our you know daily lives. To be to be quite honest with you, especially as um, our lives get very intertwined with the digital realms. We look at reviews before we buy anything online, before we buy an add to cart on Amazon, before we book that next vacation. We look at those little stars. But what if those stars and those reviews are not real? What if the people that are writing those reviews have been paid off or there are bots just you know, generating those reviews? That's the crux of the problem. And unfortunately for us, um, this problem has been worsening in the last couple of years. And at fake spot, so our company specializes in detecting fake reviews using artificial intelligence. We have a free to use a Chrome extension and browser extension suite of products. We also have really powerful mobile apps that will look at the product you're, you're viewing on Amazon or the business you're looking at on Yelp and TripAdvisor. And we give a very simple to digest grade from an A to an F. A meaning you can trust the reviews. There's a majority of trustworthy reviews. F meaning there's a lot of uh, deceptive reviews and you should tread with caution. So we've been, you know, analyzing this uh, trend with reviews. So I actually launched the website in January, 2015. So we've been doing this now about six years and we've accumulated um, vast amounts of data where we can actually analyze the trends with reviews on all these platforms. And are, is this problem worsening? Is it getting better? For some platforms it is, for some platforms have been pretty stagnant the you know the amount hasn't been going up and down but it, the problem is still there but the unfortunate trend is that the the amount of fake reviews extrapolated online is just getting worse and you know that's a worrying trend because people are starting not to trust the content they see online or they read online and uh, whether it's a comment review you know the upvote downvote uh, that you're seeing on a comment all of that can be gamed and gamified by fraudsters and that's what we specialize in at FakeSpot. We're building AI technology that detects these fraudulent patterns. So how did this come about? Why did you do this? Did you get burned on a purchase or what happened? Yes, uh, that's actually the story. So I actually bought this supplement in Christmas 2014, right before the launch of this website. And uh, it was some supplement that was promising really good recovery time for exercise and stuff like that. So I, you know, looked at the rating, hundreds of five-star reviews. So I'm like, okay, I trust all the ratings here. I did the one-click checkout, got the product in two days. And, it, and in physical form, this product looked like someone made it in a garage as a side project. So to me, I was like, okay, there's something off here. And then as I opened the packaging up and I looked at the pill content, it looked like someone just swooped in uh, sawdust from a, like a wood shop, a uh, wood workshop. So I was like, uh, hmm, okay. Why are there hundreds of five-star reviews? This makes no sense. So I went back and I looked at all those reviews and I took a closer look and I noticed that either they had broken grammar, broken English, there were typos all over the place. So the bots were writing those reviews and some of them made no sense, but they were just five stars. And some of them were actual, you know, uh, they made sense, but they were people that were paid off by the seller or the brand to write that five-star review. And back then it was actually much cheaper to generate fake reviews uh, as it is today. And we can, we can talk about that a little bit later, but um, those, so there were two categories. There was bot generated reviews and their human generated fake reviews. So that's when the idea for FakeSpot actually sprung to my mind. Um, I said to myself, okay, I've been doing AI and NLP for the last couple of years. Uh, let's try to emulate what I just did with my brain and process text and try to understand if there's a deception within these reviews. And at that time, there was no such website on the internet where you put in the product and it will spit out a grade within, you know, like 30 to one minute, 30 seconds to one minute. And we do this in real time. We will actually consume all the reviews, the reviews and all the reviewer information and a sample of them. And then we will spit out a grade um, telling you if you should trust those reviews or not. And we will automate this, um, you know, this vetting process of the veracity of those, uh, those textual content. So that's, uh, you know, that's when the idea started and I, I did get burned, I did get scammed on Amazon and I was actually quite shocked why 
the platforms weren't doing anything. So uh, from from that time to now, I have you know a uh, couple more points in my understanding why the platforms don't take care of this issue as much as they should. Um, obviously, there's a lot of different factors here, but there's also um, it's kind of a wild west. The legalities around this, you know, it's it's not as clear cut. So there, there are a lot of aspects to fake reviews that have not been, you know, put in stone with regards to the government and consumer law, but also uh, a lot of these bigger companies have exploited this and use it to their advantage for their growth. And this is very much a gray area zone in certain cases. So it's not just a matter of it being difficult for them to determine which reviews are fake and which are not. Well, so they, they do combat some parts of fake reviews, the low hanging fruit that are like, let's say, uh, broken English or there are typos all over the place. You know, uh, Amazon have more than the capability to actually tackle that. And so what about Google? You know, they have Google reviews on Google Maps and stuff like that. Um, they have the tech stacks to detect that. But the problem is when you have the human generated fake reviews, which is what we actually specialize in. Um, uh, it gets it gets more daunting, and uh, uh, to detect those kinds of reviews, it's it's very difficult. It's a very complex task. So with FakeSpot, what we do is we have a database of 10 billion reviews, and we've analyzed 1.4 billion reviewer profiles. Um, it's a huge number. Just to give you like a comparison, um, TripAdvisor has 700 million reviews worldwide, and we have 10 billion reviews in our repository. Why is that important? Because we can actually throw this data into our models and those models will find uh, patterns of uh, how the fraud is evolving over time. And you better believe it that this is a very much a, a cowboy and bandits game. Uh, every year there are new techniques springing into the fore and our system actually detects that ahead of the curve. So uh, those types of fraud is much more difficult because we're actually um, cross-referencing reviews from many different platforms across the internet. And as far as we know, a lot of these platforms don't do that. Um, and, you know, there's also the, the priority. So like a lot of these companies, their main mission is not, oh, we're gonna remove all the fake reviews on our platform. It's probably, you know, let's say tertiary or even, even lower on the list as a, as a mission. You know, it's not the primary mission. And when that is not your primary mission, you will not do as good of a job as like, for example, fake spot, fake spot. This is our only mission. So tell us how consumers can use fake spot. Uh, you, you're, you're an app and you're also a browser plugin, right? Yeah, we're really easy to use. So just uh, go to fake spot.com and uh, we will have a landing page showing what we support on the computer you're on. So if you're using Google Chrome, we have a very powerful Chrome extension that you can download from the Chrome web store. And that extension just gets added into your browser. And what happens is we can then in real time, as you browse amazon.com, you type in amazon.com, you go to a product, we will show our grades everywhere on the page. So you don't waste your time just looking at those reviews and trying to figure out if they're fake or not. Um, we automate that whole process. We also have a very powerful filter search uh, function in our extension where if you're searching for a product on Amazon, you can sort by most uh, authentic reviews to least authentic reviews. So you could sort those search results. So we save you a lot of time and money and frustration with those fake reviews because if you do end up buying a product that has a fake review, uh, you will be disappointed. It does not match what those reviews say, just like I was many years ago when I was scammed. And then we, on the mobile front, we have um, a very powerful iOS and Android app um, called FakeSpot Pro. And it basically brings that extension experience onto your phone. And it's a, you can call it like a type of browser. You type in amazon.com and we will actually show the grade, the FakeSpot guard. So if the seller you're buying from is gonna sell you a counterfeit, we will warn you. So if you're gonna buy a fake AirPod, we will show, we will show a red uh, badge and tell you a hey, warning this seller may sell you a counterfeit based off everything we know about the seller. And then we also summarize the reviews. So you don't need to go and scroll through the reviews. We actually have this really powerful, powerful feature called fake spot highlights and fake spot highlights summarizes those reviews into five uh, categories that pertain the most for uh, e-commerce. So like uh, things that should be interested in the quality of the product, the shipping of the product, the competitiveness of the product, uh, the packaging and the appearance, so we will we will diagnose all these issues and summarize them in really easy to understand points. 
So, uh, you know, we're available everywhere. We're available on uh, Google Chrome and all the other Chromium based browsers. So Microsoft Edge is an example, Brave browser is an example. And we are soon releasing a Safari extension. So if you're using Safari on Mac OS, uh, our Safari extension is also just as powerful as the Google Chrome one. And then we have the iOS and Android apps. Do users pay for the, for the apps or the service? No, it's free to use. Uh, you don't need to pay for our service. Uh, it's, you, you just install it and you're ready to go. So how is it that you people would wonder, okay, how do you make, uh, how do you make money as a business? So that, that's a very interesting question. So over the years, at the beginning of you know, this journey with the company, we actually um, we served ads on our FakeSpot report. So if you landed on FakeSpot.com and you were looking at a business or a product, we would just show ads there. And that's how we made a lot of our money in, in the early days. Fortunately, since then, um, we've raised more capital and uh, you know we are very much a growth-oriented uh, startup. So you know the classical stereotype from Silicon Valley, and we're also very fortunate that we have investors that believe in what we're doing, believe in the mission that we're uh, doing here, and protecting consumers and actually providing a, a, a product and a platform that does this through state-of-the-art AI. So for us, it's very important to actually uh, prioritize our users' data and their privacy because I would not want my own data to be monetized or anything like that. And that's the way of the platforms of today. Most of those platforms that were launched 10 years ago, a la, you know, Facebook or whatever, they use your data for their advantage and then they bombard you with ads and recommendations and whatever. So we're right now pre-revenue because we're still trying to figure out what, how can we monetize this? And like I said, we're very fortunate that we have investors that back us in this regard. Um, we believe we have a good way going forward that we will probably um, launch next year where we can monetize the platform in a way that respects users' values and users' rights. Because um, I'm very much in the corner of the consumer and very much in the corner of your data should be your data. And this is what the next chapter of the internet demands. We shouldn't be you know, letting these platforms know who we sleep with, what medical conditions we have, where we live, how are we feeling? That shouldn't be the case. But what, what kind of data then would uh, you be able to use that would allow you to make money while still respecting people's privacy? So not, not user-oriented data. We would be using probably our, um, the product data that we have or you know, any information that we've received from um, the categories we're looking. So for a very simple example, we could um, provide recommendations on our website that are kind of like a la wire cutter or consumer reports so we're, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, and maybe we would be able to get a commission off those recommendations and things like that. So it's, you know, it's very much up still in the air of what exactly that would look like. We've had experiments here and there. That experiment I just mentioned to you, we've, we've done that and it has worked well. So we may just you know, amplify that and launch it on our website, but we're still trying to figure that out. For us, uh, we're, it's still not a priority. We're very much focused on the te technology that we're building. And then at the right moment, we would like to focus on uh, the monetization. Obviously, we're still a business. We're a private enterprise. And um, we will need to get revenue in to, um, you know, to build a much larger uh, success story here. And uh, that's a very critical aspect of the journey. So, so for now, we're still very much focused on the technology and very much focused on delivering a product that brings a stellar experience when you're shopping online, because a lot of these platforms won't protect you. They don't care if you're reading fake reviews. They don't care if you're going to get a counterfeit. Everything is retroactive. Like you get a fake product. Okay, please return it to me. A to Z guarantee. Okay. Then you get another product and it's fake again. I mean, uh, you know, on and on the problem goes. You've taken a look at uh, which reviews on, on retailer sites are, are the most unreliable and, and reliable as well. What, what have you found? Yeah, so we actually just released a report on our analysis on fake reviews across the internet and across different marketplaces and platforms. So we looked at um, the biggest platforms in e-commerce in the you know, United States-based market. And we examined Walmart, Amazon, Best Buy, and we try to take a percentage of you know, the average of fake reviews that we would find in our analysis on these platforms. So 
um, the summary is we looked from 2018 to 2020. We did not add 2021 yet for the general overview percentage because uh, Black Friday is still coming up and Christmas is coming up. And when that happens, the amount of fake reviews just goes up. It goes ballistic because the competitiveness around this season is uh, quite mind boggling. So we noticed that the problem of fake reviews is just going, getting worse. And 2018, it was about 21.6% average of fake reviews. And then that's across all marketplaces that we support. And then in 2019, we have 32.5%. Uh, and then in 2020, it went a couple percentage points down to 30.9%. So not good. 30% of the reviews that you're seeing online are not reliable and not trustworthy. So that, that's quite a, quite a bit of a problem. And then when you uh, zoom into this data and we look at uh, the average aggregate from 2018 to 2021, uh, to this point before the Black Friday uh, Christmas season, we're measuring the amount of fake reviews on Walmart, Amazon, Best Buy. Walmart has the worst problem with fake reviews. It's at 37.6%. Amazon is at 27.3%. And Best Buy has the best, uh, in this case, the lowest amount of fake reviews at 8.1%. Best Buy actually does a really good job in filtering out the fake reviews on their platform. Very interesting. So for more information, people should go to fakespot.com or they can find the FakeSpot app uh, from Apple or, or Google, Android. And uh, congratulations on what you're doing. And we look forward to hearing what's next from you. Thank you very much, Fred. It was a true pleasure. Now this. It takes a lot of listening to build a better radio, and that's just what the folks at Sea Crane have done. Bob Crane and his crew, nestled among the rivers and tallest trees in the world in Fortuna, California, have made a habit of listening to their customers, and that's just what they've done in building the CC Skywave SSB the Swiss Army knife of portable radios. For everyday listening to AM or FM in the yard or patio or on the nightstand without having to drain a mobile phone battery, it's a great companion. But it is also a companion equipped for NOAA weather information and alerts that can be life-saving. You can listen to FEMA and Coast Guard transmissions too. Beyond all of that, you can tune into shortwave signals from around the world. It's compact, easy to take with you, and built to last. The CC SkyWave SSB. Click on the link at textonation.com.